is on the no risks arbitrage argument. Check out the entire Black Shells course at momentsintrading.com or at youtube.com slash momentsintrading. One of the key assumptions of the Black Shells formula is the no riskless arbitrage argument, which says that one cannot freely profit without taking risk. In other words, one cannot set up a situation where they will make more money than a riskless fixed income investment without there being some risk of losing money. If that were not the case, one would be able to engage in riskless arbitrage. Theoretically, using borrowed money at the risk-free rate by shorting a bond, one would be able to place two offsetting positions that combined make a profit that exceeds the interest on the bond, yet the total position has no risk of losing money. Since the position would pay a higher rate of return than the interest cost on the loan, and there would be no risk of losing money, it would be the same as making free money. Therefore, if it was possible to remove the risk from all markets, then all markets would have to grow at the same level of returns or one could engage in riskless arbitrage, and the rate that all assets would grow would be the highest rate one could currently get on a fixed income investment that does not contain risk, which is a U.S. government bond. This is called the risk-free rate. To prove this theory, Black and Scholes, along with the help of Robert Burton, developed something that is known as a dynamic hedge, a theoretical way to remove all risk by taking two opposite positions in the market in such a way that both positions are perfectly hedged. In other words, when the market moves, one position increases in value the exact amount that the other position decreases in value, and the total value of both positions never changes. Furthermore, as the market moves, it is theoretically possible to keep readjusting the size of one of the two positions so that the two positions remain perfectly hedged or balanced, and one position always goes up or down the exact opposite amount of the other position. So let's look at an example similar to the example Block and Scholes used to prove this theory. Let's say theoretically I could find a broker that lets me buy or sell not just whole shares of stock, but fractions of shares as well, in any size fraction, one-tenth, one-twenty-fifth, one-ninetieth, any size. This broker also lets me do the same thing with bonds. I can buy or sell bonds, even fractions of whole bonds, in any amount. Furthermore, this broker does not charge commissions and there is no price spread. So what I have here is a situation where I could borrow money by selling bonds and I could pay the loans off by buying the bonds back. I then use this borrowed money to buy stock. Therefore, I can freely borrow money to buy stock at any time, in any amount, by shorting bonds. And I can pay back the loan, or any part of the loan, at any time, in any amount, by selling some of the stock and covering those shorts on the bonds. I then take two offsetting positions. In the first position, I short, also called write, a call option on a stock. I then calculate out something called the hedge ratio, also known as the options delta. This is the ratio of stock I must hold per option contract that I short so that both positions are hedged. For example, let's say that the calculated ratio is 0 0.6. An option contract is for 100 shares and the options delta is 0 0.6. So for the second position, I buy 60 shares of the stock using the money I collected from selling the call option and borrowing the rest of the money at the risk-free rate by shorting a bond. At that particular moment, I am perfectly hedged. In other words, the moment the stock moves in price, the value of the option I shorted will increase or decrease at the exact opposite amount as the stock position I hold. The moment the stock changes in price, one position increases in value, the same amount the other position decreases in value, and the total combined value does not change. Once the stock price even moves the slightest amount, the hedge ratio changes. In other words, the ratio of shares of stock to option contracts I must hold so that the positions are hedged and cannot lose money changes to a slightly different ratio. I must slightly increase or decrease the amount of stock I hold so that the ratio is once again equal. If I need to increase the amount of stock I hold, I buy the stock with money I borrow at the riskless rate by shorting a bond in the amount I need. If I need to decrease the amount of stock I hold, I sell that stock 
and use the money to pay down my loan by using it to cover part of my shorter bonds. This is known as dynamic rebalancing. Theoretically, if there are no commissions, one could continuously keep readjusting the stock position every time price moved throughout the entire life of the option so that both positions are continuously balanced to each other and in doing so, remove all risk of losing money. Therefore, if the portfolio does not increase at the riskless rate, then there is an arbitrage opportunity. I took the total portfolio with money I borrowed at the riskless rate and there is no risk of loss. If the total position increases more than the riskless rate, I would then make free money with no chance of loss. If the position increased at a rate lower than the riskless rate, I could reverse the positions, buy a call option, and short the stock, and keep dynamically rebalancing the position throughout the life of the option to keep it hedged and still make free money without any risk of loss. Therefore, since the risk is removed, the total position must increase at the same rate as a fixed riskless investment. Furthermore, since we can set up a similar dynamic hedge using any two markets, it is given that if we could remove the risk from all markets, then all markets must increase at the riskless rate. In my last video, I explained how it is assumed price follows a geometric Brownian motion that has two driving forces for price, an overall drift rate that all markets have, and the effect that volatility has on that drift rate. The no riskless arbitrage argument proves that the drift rate is a risk-free rate, and it is this proof that it is the center point of the awarding of the Nobel Peace Prize in Economics to the developers of the Black-Scholes formula in 1998. In my next video, I will discuss these two driving forces of price.